it is my pleasure to describe to you today the AI algorithm for retinal fluid volume quantification from self-imaging with the home OCT. These are my financial disclosures and these are my co-authors. The presentation will discuss medical devices not clear for clinical use by the FDA. Automated analysis of OCT images is a prerequisite for efficient remote patient monitoring with the patient. The outcomes included the dice coefficient for segmentation comparison, the Pearson correlation coefficient and absolute mean difference for volume comparisons, and the temporal dynamics of intra- and subretinal fluid. The study included 10 eyes of 5 patients, 6 of which had neovascular AMD. Here you can see the investigational uh, patient self-operated homo CT system which allows daily tracking of fluid volume with a field of view of the central 10 degrees. There is automated fluid quantification with, AI based, <coughs> with the AI-based Notal OCT analyzer. This is the process flow of the Notal OCT analyzer. The OCT output, the biscans, are analyzed by artificial intelligence to provide segmentation, fluid volume quantification and BISCAN ranking, as you can see on this fluid status, status map, which includes both on the, fluid, on the fluid status report, which includes both the fluid thickness map and the, full, the fluid volume graph. <clears throat> Let me show you some examples and statistics. Here you can see a human grader versus a NOAA segmentation of the intraretinal fluid on the BISCAN level and on the fluid thickness map. You can see that they are pretty similar. Likewise, for subretinal fluid, manual annotation, both on the BISCAN and on the fluid thickness map, is very similar to the NOAA segmentation. When you look at the dice coefficient, which is defined as twice the area of overlap divided by the total number of pixels, <coughs> NOAA and the human grader marked fluid on BISCANs with a perfect overlap, which would be 100%, you can see that there is a high percentage of overlap between NOAA and the human graders with mismatches that are similar to those between the human graders. And this is true for intraretinal fluid, subretinal fluid, and for the total fluid. The Pearson correlation of 24 volume scans from three time points of eight eyes between fluid volume based on the NOAA versus the mean volume calculated for manual delineation by two graders was 0 0.996 with a close match to the 45 degrees line. Here you can three, see three months follow-up with an home OCT uh, in a patient with recurrent fluid in both eyes. In the right eye, there is, pre there is presence of retinal fluid over 15 days, leading up to the time of the pre-scheduled visit, and fast resolution within three days, followed by a recurrence after 40 days prior to a pre-scheduled treatment visit. The fluid thickness map shows that leakage is confined to a smaller area, and the graph shows the smaller subretinal fluid volume upon the second recurrence. In the fellow eye, in contrast, during the same follow-up period, know the persistence of subretinal fluid that is resolved through three injections, but with subretinal fluid present between injections. The patient left eye, this eye, should have, would have benefited from a retreatment which would have been earlier than the six weeks pre-scheduled visit, according to this treat and extent regimen, that was set based on the past time to reactivation seen in the other eye. So we are introducing the concept of cumulated fluid volume represented by the area under the fluid volume curve between office visits. 
In this bilateral case, we see that the cumulative fluid volume can differ significantly for eyes that present with similar amount of fluid on OCT at the time of treatment. The cumulative fluid thickness map illustrates the magnitude and localization of the fluid exposure to the subretinal space during the pre-selected six weeks retreatment interval. Of note, the lower cumulative fluid volume in the right eye correlates with a better 